Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe to join in on fun. For today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a mock neck t-shirt. This modern tee features a tri-section design that meshes clean lines and texture for the perfect blend of classic design and modern crochet goodness. Speaking of, if you're looking for more crochet makes that blend the classic with something new, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of modern takes on crochet classics, tutorials, and patterns included, with even more dropping twice weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado. For this project, any category for yarn will work, but I used a total of 200 grams of yarn, that's 450 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5.5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's padding giveaway by telling us your favorite place to crochet. Mine would have to be cuddled up in bed with my heated blanket on. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using three stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch, single crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 5.5mm hook and start off by making an odd number chain that starts one inch underneath our underarm down to where we'd like the bottom of this top to be, and that is combining the bottom band as well. Now, I'd like for mine to be slightly cropped, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 35. That's roughly 9.5 inches or 24 centimeters. Now that we have our chain, we're going to get started on our row one. Now since we are starting along the bottom of our piece, that is the opposite from our tail end, we're going to start by putting one single crochet into every stitch, making sure it's an odd number of stitches for the length that we'd like for our bottom band to be. So we're all going to start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Then into that chain that we blocked off for the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do that again into that following chain, insert, pull through, pull through two, and like I said, put one single crochet into every stitch for the height that we'd like for our bottom band to be. Now I'd like for mine to be just about three and a half inches or nine centimeters, so I will meet you guys back when I have 13 single crochets, and just as a reminder, it does need to be an odd number of stitches. So you're back. I now have my bottom band portion all completed. We are going to want to make sure to insert a stitch marker into that last single crochet just so we can remember where that starts. Now from here we're going to do our moss stitch middle detail. So right after that last single crochet, all we're going to do is chain one, skip a chain, and then into the following, insert with a single crochet. So so far we should have a chain space and single crochet, let's do this again. Chain one, skip a chain, into the next, with a single crochet and continue to chain one, skip a stitch and single crochet into the next until we all have two chains left. So we are back. We made our way all the way down with our moss stitch detail. We should all have two chains left. And now we're gonna close off our row with our increases. We are gonna wanna make sure that we're inserting a stitch marker into that last stitch that we have for our moss stitch detail. Then what we're going to do from here is into that Second to last chain, we're going to put one double crochet. So yarn over, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then into that last chain, an increase of three single crochets. So into there, insert with one, with a second, and with a third single crochet. Now this should look the same for every size so far. So let's get started on the following row. We're all going to chain three and flip. Now once we have turned our work, we're going to start with an increase of three 
double crochets. So into that first stitch, if I can grab my working yarn, we're going to yarn over, insert into that first stitch with one double crochet, into that same first stitch with a second double crochet, and then into that same first stitch with a third double crochet. Now this top detail section is going to be our lemon peel stitch. And roughly our lemon peel stitch is just going to be a single crochet in one stitch and a double crochet into the next to get the texture that we want and just continue that till we reach our stitch marker. So since we just did our increase of three double crochets, into that following stitch we're going to put one single crochet, into the next one double crochet, and we're just going to continue with one single and one double until we reach our stitch marker stitch. Now for everyone, you should all just have one stitch left, so into that one, we're going to insert with a single crochet. Now since we're right at the middle of our piece, we're now going to do our moss stitch row back down. Now what we're going to do from here to get started on our moss stitch detail is start with a chain. And we do want to make sure that we're still inserting our stitch marker into the top of that moss stitch detail, so I'm just going to take this stitch marker out from my previous row and insert it into the chain, and then repeat. So since we just did our chain, we're going to skip that following stitch, which is a single crochet from our previous row, and then into that next stitch, which is a chain space, insert with a single crochet. Now so far for our moss stitch detail, we should have a chain space and a single crochet. Again, we're going to chain one, skip a stitch, and then into the next stitch, which is our chain space, insert with a single crochet. And we're just going to continue doing this until we reach our bottom band stitch marker stitch. And just as a really quick tip, we should have the same amount of chain spaces as our previous moss stitch detail. So we are back. We've made our way all the way down with our moss stitch detail. Now we are at our stitch marker stitch, and now we're going to work our front post single crochets for our bottom band. So all we're going to do is find that first single crochet that we have that's right underneath that stitch marker stitch because this stitch marker to the end is going to be our bottom band, and do a front post single crochet. So I'm just going to take this stitch marker out for now, and then finding the body of that single crochet, we're going to bring our hook down underneath the body of that stitch, and then through the other side, and then we're going to single crochet. And don't forget to insert your stitch marker into the top of that stitch, just so we know where the bottom band starts and ends. Let's do this again. So finding that next single crochet, we're going to bring our hook underneath the body, through the other side, and single crochet, and again, underneath the body, through the other side, and single crochet. That's basically it. Continue on with our front post single crochets to reach the end of the row. Alright, so we are back. We made our way all the way down with our front post single crochets. Now we are not worked into that last stitch, which is the edge of our previous row, because we're just going to do a single crochet into the edge of the row, but it's not actually going to count as a stitch. Now just as a really quick tip, so far we should have the same amount of stitches that we made for our bottom band. So counting from my stitch marker stitch to where I ended, I had a total of 13 stitches, which is correct for me, and all we're going to do is single crochet just into the edge of that stitch. Now like I said, this single crochet isn't actually going to count as a stitch, we just like to secure the row down. Now we're going to get started on our row 3, so we're all going to chain 1 and flip. Now from here we're going to do our front post single crochets all the way back up. So finding the first front post single crochet from our previous row, we're going to bring our hook down underneath the body of that stitch through the other side and single crochet per usual. And continue this until we reach our stitch marker stitch. We should all still have the same amount of stitches that we made for the bottom band, so for me I will end with 13. The bottom band portion of our row 3 is complete. Now we're going to do the same moss stitch row as our row 1. So right after we have inserted our stitch marker into that last bottom band stitch, we are going to chain 1, skip that first stitch from our previous row, which should be a single crochet, and then into the next, which is a chain space, we're going to insert our hook in through there with a single crochet. And so far we should have a chain space and single, and again we're going to chain 1, skip a stitch, which should be a single from our previous row, insert into the next, which is our chain space, with another single. We're going to continue this until we reach our top detail stitch marker stitch. And another quick tip, we should have the same amount of chain spaces as our previous row, again. So our moss stitch detail for our row 3 is complete. Now we're going to do our lemon peel stitch detail. Now it's going to start off the same for every size. 
Now right after we have inserted our stitch marker into our last moss stitch stitch, our following stitch is going to be a double crochet. So yarn over into that following stitch, insert with a double crochet, and then into the next with a single crochet. Now as a really quick tip when it comes to doing our lemon peel stitch, each of our stitches are going to be staggered from our previous row. So we want to make sure that our double crochet is worked into our previous row's single crochet, and then our single crochet is worked into our previous row's double crochet, but that is excluding the increase because obviously the increases are in multiples of three of the same stitch. But from here, continue to alternate between one double crochet and one single crochet until we have one stitch left. And just as a really quick tip, the second to last stitch in this row should be a double crochet. So my lemon peel stitches are complete. Now the last stitch that I did is a double crochet and into that last stitch we're all going to do an increase of three single crochets. So just into that last stitch we're all going to insert with one, same last stitch with two, and then same last stitch with three single crochets. Now our row three is complete. Now let's all get started on our row four and that's going to start with an increase of three double crochets. So chain three and flip. Now, like I said, every even number row is going to start with an increase of three doubles. So into that first stitch, start with one double, same first stitch with a second double, same first stitch with a third double crochet. Then from here, we're going to do our lemon peel stitch. So the following stitch is going to be a single crochet. So insert into that next stitch with a single, into that following stitch with a double and just continue to alternate between a single crochet and a double crochet until our stitch marker is reached. Our lemon peel stitch detail for our row four is complete. We have now reached our stitch marker. Now we're going to do our moss stitch detail. So we're all going to chain one. Don't forget to insert your stitch marker into that chain one. And just like for our row two, we're going to skip that first stitch and into that next stitch, which is our chain space, insert with a single, and that's it. We're going to continue to chain one, skip a stitch, and single crochet into the next until we reach our bottom band stitch marker stitch. Our moss stitch detail for our row four is complete. Now we're going to finish up this row with our front post singles the same way that we did our row two. So into that following stitch that we have, which should be our stitch marker stitch, we're going to insert with a front post single. So we're going to bring our hook down underneath that following single crochet through the other side with one front post single and don't forget to insert your stitch marker into that same stitch then put one front post single into every stitch. We've made our way down with our front post single crochets. Now just to end the row off with just one single crochet to secure it all down. So just into the edge of that last stitch insert with a single and remember that that single crochet doesn't count as a stitch that's just to secure everything down. And that's it. So, so far for every row, we should have two more stitches than our previous row because of the increases that we're doing. From here, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows until we have an underarm portion that can reach from mid underarm over to the front of our body. So roughly where a bra strap or a tank top strap would be. Then I'll meet you guys back right after an odd number row. So along the top, so we can work straight into the shoulder together from there. All right, so we are back. So the total width that I have for my underarm portion is roughly two inches or five centimeters, and I have seven rows. From here, we all should have ended along the top. So what we're all going to do from here is make an even number chain that reaches the top of our shoulder. So just a few tips before we move forward. The lemon peel stitch detail will expand just a little bit further than our moss and our front post single crochets, as you guys can see mine does here. That's fine and completely normal. If we just kind of pull our moss stitch and our front post single crochet portion out, which we will once when it's actually worn, it'll all even out. And lastly, when we're making our even number chain, we're going to make sure that this tail end stays at one inch underneath our underarm because we don't want to create a bigger armhole. So I have already measured mine out. I need roughly three and a half inches or nine centimeters. So I made a chain of 16. And once we have our chain, all we're going to do is our lemon peel stitch detail all the way down until we reach our stitch marker. Then we're just going to continue to do the moss stitch and front post single crochet sections the same way that we've been doing because these portions don't increase or decrease, only the top portion does. So let's get started. So what we're going to do once we have our chain is block off that last chain and do a chain three. 
Now that chain three doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Then from here, we're gonna yarn over, preparing for a double crochet, then inserting into that fourth chain from our hook, or into that chain that we blocked off, insert with a double crochet, then into that following chain with a single crochet. And that's it. We're gonna continue to alternate between a double crochet and single crochet all the way down until we reach our stitch marker stitch. We have made our way down with our lemon peel stitch detail until we reached our stitch marker. Now from here, we're going to do our same moss stitch row that we've been doing for every even number row. Then closing off the row with our front post single crochets, remembering to close off the row with a single crochet into that last stitch. Then I will meet you guys back. Our first shoulder row is complete. Now from here, we're just going to get started on the following shoulder row, and then it's going to be a repeat until we're ready to get started on our neckline. So since the bottom band and the moss stitch detail is the same for every row so far, we're going to get that section finished up, and then I'll meet you back once we're ready to get started on our top detail. So my bottom band and moss stitch detail are complete. From here, we're just going to do our lemon peel stitch, making our way all the way up with no increases and no decreases. Then our last stitch should be a single crochet. At the end of the row, we're gonna chain three, flip our work, then do our lemon peel stitch all the way down. That's gonna be a repeat of this first row. So starting with a double crochet and alternating, then do our moss stitch and our front post single crochet bottom band. From here, just continue to repeat those two previous rows with no increases and no decreases until we have a shoulder portion that can reach over to the side of the base of our neck. Once we do, I'll meet you guys back right after an even number row or along the bottom so we can get started on the neckline together. We are back. My shoulder portion is complete. I now have a total of 14 rows. My width is roughly three and a half inches or nine centimeters, and now we're gonna get started on our neckline. So first things first, we're all gonna start by inserting our stitch marker into any even numbered stitch that we have from the top that's right at the base of our neck. So I've actually inserted my stitch marker into the 14th stitch from the top. That's roughly three and a half inches or nine centimeters. Now we're just going to do our row, making our way all the way up. So since we're all along the bottom, we're going to do our same front post single crochets that we've been doing, our same moss stitch details, and our same lemon peel stitch details all the way up until we reach our stitch marker. And then I will meet you back. So I have made my way all the way up with my first neckline row. Now everyone's last stitch should have been a single crochet into the stitch that's right before our stitch marker. Then from here we're going to do our following row, and this neckline portion isn't going to have any increases or decreases. So it's basically going to be the same thing as the shoulders, we're just going to have less lemon peel stitches. So since we're all along the top, we're all going to chain three, flip our work, start off our following row with a double crochet, then continue on with our same lemon peel stitch, moss stitch, and front post single crochet bottom band till you reach the end of the row. Then just continue to repeat those two rows with absolutely no increases and no decreases until we have a portion that can reach across our chest over to the other side of the base of our neck. Then I'll meet you back right after an odd number row so along the top so we can work straight into the shoulder from there together. Alrighty, so we are back. The total of my neckline is complete. I have a total of 33 rows. My width is roughly nine inches or 23 centimeters. Now from here, we're gonna get started on the other shoulder portion. Now the other shoulder portion is gonna be done pretty much the same way that we did the first one. So just as a quick refresher, since we all should have ended along the top, we're all gonna start by making a chain for the same amount of stitches that we skipped when we got started on our neckline. So for those of you that have my numbers, I skipped a total of 14 stitches. On this side, I made a chain 14. Then we're gonna get started on our following row. So the following row is gonna start with a double crochet, single crochet, and then just continue to alternate that all the way down until we reach our moss stitch, stitch marker stitch. Then we're going to do our same moss stitch and front post single crochet stitches till we reach the end of the row. Then from here, we're just going to continue on with our shoulder rows. Like I said, they're gonna be done exactly the same way as the first one, again, with no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows. Once we do, we should all end along the bottom and then I'll meet you guys back so we can finish up with our underarm. We are back. Our second shoulder portion is complete. Now I have a total of 40 rows. My width is roughly 11 inches or 28 centimeters. And now we're gonna finish up with our underarm. So first things first, we're going to insert our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made that led all the way up to our shoulder. Now for those of you that have my numbers, I made a chain 16. So on this side, I inserted my stitch marker into the 16th stitch from the top. 
Now, since we should all be along the bottom, what we're going to do is our following row. So we're going to do our back loop, single crochet, bottom band, our ma stitch, and then we're going to do our lemon peel stitch the same way that we've been doing it this entire time, making our way all the way up, leaving three stitches right before a stitch marker. So we are back. I made my way down with my first underarm row. I have left my last one, two, three stitches right before my stitch marker. Now everyone's last stitch should have been a double crochet. Now from here, we're going to do a decrease of three single crochets. So starting with inserting your hook into that third to last stitch, pull through, into that second to last stitch, pull through, and then into that last stitch, pull through for four loops on our hook, then yarn over and pull through all four. Then from here to get started on our following row, we're all going to chain three and flip. Now we're gonna start this following row off with a decrease of three double crochets. So yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch, pull through, next stitch, pull through, stitch right after that, pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then we're gonna yarn over, pull through the first four loops to get two loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through two. Now from here, we're gonna continue on with our same sequence, making our way all the way down. So everyone's next stitch should be a single crochet. So we're gonna insert into there with a single crochet, next stitch with a double crochet, and we're gonna finish off this row per usual. Now just to make sure that we have these two rows down, once we reach the end of this row, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then make our way all the way down the same way that we have been doing this entire time, leaving the last three stitches so we can do our decrease together once more. We are back. Our third underarm row is nearly complete. Now I'm just gonna do the decreases with y'all once more. So we should have all made our way all the way back up, leaving the last three stitches. Everyone's last stitch, again, should have been a double crochet. Now we're gonna close off the row with a decrease of three single crochets. So all we're gonna do is insert our hook into that third to last stitch, pull through, second to last, pull through, then into that last, pull through, then yarn over, and pull through all four. Our third underarm row is complete. Let's just do the next one together. So let's all chain three and flip. Now we're gonna start this row off with a decrease of three double crochets. So yarn over into that first stitch, pull through, next stitch, pull through, stitch right after that, and pull through for five loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through the first four loops, then yarn over, pull through the next two loops. Then our next stitch is going to be a single crochet and we're just gonna finish up the row per usual. Now from here is just gonna be a repeat of our two previous rows until we have the same amount of rows as our first underarm portion. Once when we do, do a chain up of one and cut and then I will meet you back. I am back. The entirety of my front panel is complete. Now I have a total of roughly 13 inches or 33 centimeters. Now we're gonna get started on the back panel. And our back panel is gonna be done pretty much the same way as our front panel, minus the neckline portion. It's gonna be a solid back. So just to talk you guys through it, we are going to do the exact same underarm portion for the same amount of rows. Make the same chain that led all the way up to our shoulders. Then we're just going to do our rows working away across our back with no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows from our first shoulder row all the way across to our last shoulder row. Then we're going to do our underarm portion, the second one that we just did together. Once we have the second one completed, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back so we can seam it all together. All right, so now that we have finished both our front and our back panel, we're ready to seam all together. So first things first, I'm just gonna place my front panel on top of my back panel. Then I'm gonna insert my hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back. I am then going to insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. Then all I'm gonna do is put one single crochet into every side row, working in through both the front and the back panel at the same time. So we're all gonna start by finding our first side row, and this is mine right here. I'm gonna find that top loop and insert my hook in through there. Find that next top loop within the back panel, insert my hook in through there, and if you're like me and you don't like to weave in your tail ends later, go ahead and place your tail end over your hook. And now we're just going to single crochet around everything. Let's do that again. Finding our next side row within the front panel, this is mine right here, find that top loop. Find the next side row within my back panel, this is mine, so I'm gonna find that top loop and single crochet around everything. Let's do this once more. This is my next side row. 
find that top loop within the front panel, find that same top loop within the back panel, and insert with a single crochet, and that's it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, repeat on the other side, and then I'll meet you back to seam up the sides. So, now that our shoulders are all seamed up, we're now going to seam our sides. We're all going to start by making sure that our work is still flipped wrong side out, meaning the seams that we did for the shoulders is still along the outside. Then, we're going to be inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We're all going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. And now from here, we're going to be doing another single crochet seam but just putting one single crochet into every stitch, working in through both the front and the back panel. So pretty much the same as the shoulder, but a little bit easier because we have the actual stitches to work into. So finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert your hook. First stitch into the back panel, insert, and single crochet. Again, next stitch into the front panel, next stitch into the back panel, and single crochet, and that's it. Continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, repeat on the other side, and then I will meet you back to do our neckline. We are back. We have just finished up seaming everything, and now we're going to work on our neckline. So first things first, we're all going to make sure the work is now flipped right side out, right side up. Then we're going to be inserting our hook into any one of the stitches that we have within our neckline. I prefer to insert my hook into the stitch that's nearest to my shoulder seam. Then what we're going to do from here is a single crochet row. So this row is going to be pretty simple. All we're going to do is put one single crochet into every stitch, one single crochet into every side row, and just make your way all the way around. Once we do, slip stitch into that chain space. And then right before we get started on the length of our collar, we're all going to want to try on our piece to make sure that the single crochet row that we just did fits, because the single crochet row is going to be as wide as this neckline can stretch. Now if you did it, and if it's a little bit too loose, reduce some stitches with a tighter grip, or if it's too tight, reduce some stitches with a looser grip. Either way, I'll meet you guys back. We are back and our single crochet row for our neckline is complete. Now we're just going to get started on the length of our mock neck. So right after we have slip stitched into that chain space, we're all going to start by making a chain the length that we'd like for our mock neck to be. Now I'd like for mine to be roughly 2 inches or 5 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain 10. Now that we have our chain 10, we're going to do a slip stitch row all the way down. So block off that last chain and do a chain 1. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch. So bring your hook down and into that chain. Then yarn over and gently pull through both of those loops on our hook. Again, into that next chain, insert your hook, yarn over and gently pull through both. From here, continue with one slip stitch into every chain, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the following row is going to be too tight to work into. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every stitch, we're now going to connect it into the base. So start by finding out that next available stitch into the base. Into that stitch we're going to insert, then yarn over and pull through everything with a slip stitch. Now that slip stitch into the base doesn't actually count as a stitch, we just needed to connect it. Then we need to work our way up to the following row. So slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, still doesn't count as a stitch, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So finding that first stitch from our previous row, making sure it's not into any of those slip stitches into the base, find that stitch's back loop, Yarn over and gently pull through both loops. Again, next stitch is back loop. Yarn over and gently pull through everything. From here, continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, we're going to chain one, flip our work, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then I'll meet you back just to connect it into the base once more. We are back. Our first one, two, three rows are complete. We're now going to connect it into the base the same way that we just did together. So start by finding that next stitch into the base. Insert with a slip stitch, remembering that slip stitch into the base doesn't actually count as a stitch. Then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base. Still doesn't count as a stitch. Flip our work and then repeat. So one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. From here, continue to repeat our two previous rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, I'll meet you guys back so we can seam it all up together. Alrighty, so we are back. We've made our way all the way around with our neckline, and we are pretty much all done with the collar. Now we just need to seam it all up. 
So first things first, this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam to make it look like another back loop slip stitch row. So we're all going to start by making sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up. Then we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitches of both the front and the back panel. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through everything. Then start by finding that first stitch into the front panel and insert only in through that front loop. Then find that next stitch into the back panel and insert only in through that back loop. And when we have those three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over and pull through all three. Let's do that again. Next stitch into the front panel, insert only in through that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert only in through that back loop. Then yarn over and pull through all three. And that's it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back. Alrighty, so now that our collar is all seamed up, the next thing we're going to do is our sleeve. So first things first, we're going to have to do a single crochet row along our armhole. So let's all make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up. Then we're going to be inserting our hook into any stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam within our armhole. Then from here, let's all insert our yarn onto our hook. We're all going to pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now working our way up our underarm portion, so into each of our side rows, we are going to alternate between one to two single crochet into every side row, but we are going to start with two single crochet into the first side row. So let's all start by finding that together. This is mine right here. I'm going to find that top loop and insert with two single crochets. So there's one into that same top loop with a second single crochet. Now this is my next side row. I'm then going to find that top loop and insert with just one single crochet. And that's it. Let's do this again. Finding my next side row, which is this one right here, I'm going to find that top loop and insert with two singles. So there's one, and then there's two. Then into my next side row, I'm going to find that top loop and insert with just one single. Now we're going to continue doing this into every side row, and then I'll meet you guys back when we're ready to get started into putting one single crochet into every stitch going up our shoulder. All right, so we have just finished up working our way up our underarm portion. What we're going to do from here is now put one single crochet into every stitch until our shoulder seam is reached. But the only difference for this portion of our single crochet row, this is going to need to be in multiples of three. So if you guys need to add a stitch or two or take away a stitch or two, that is completely up to you. We just want to make sure that this portion right here is in multiples of three. Now I'm going to do my single crochet row until I have my multiple of three and until I'm into the stitch right before my shoulder seam, and then I'll meet you back. So the first half of my single crochet row for my armhole is complete. I'm worked into the stitch right before my shoulder seam. Now we are all going to do a chain one and insert a stitch marker into there because that's going to be our middle stitch for our sleeve. So like I said, we're all going to chain one, insert a stitch marker into that chain, and now from here we're going to continue on with our single crochet row. So just into that next single crochet on the other side of our shoulder seam, I'm going to insert with a single, and we do want to make sure that we have the same amount of stitches on both sides. So if you guys needed to add or take away a stitch or two on this side, you're going to do the same thing on this side. And then we're going to do the same stitches that we worked into for the underarm portion. When we don't have any more side rows left to work into, and when we have the same amount of stitches on both sides, slip stitch into that chain space, then I'll meet you back. We are back and our single crochet row for our armhole is complete. We have slip stitched into that chain space and now we're going to make a chain the length that we like for our sleeve to be. So you can make this as long or as short as you'd like. Now I would like for mine to be a short sleeve. So I'm going to start by just making a chain of four and that's just going to be about an inch or two centimeters. And now that we have our chain, we're going to do a half double crochet row. So block off that last chain and do a chain two. Now that chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Then from here, we're going to be putting one to half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last chain. So just yarn over into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a half double. So insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Again, yarn over into that next chain, pull through, pull through all three, and I'll meet you back when we all have just one chain left. Now we are back. We put one half double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. Now from here, we are all going to be doing an increase of three half double crochets. So yarn over into that last chain, we're going to insert with one half double into that same last chain with a second half double. 
then into that same last chain with a third half double crochet. And now our row one is almost complete. Now we just need to connect it into the base. And how we're going to connect it into the base is we first need to make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up. Then we're going to be making sure that we're all inserting our hook to the left or clockwise because the ripping that we're about to do isn't reversible. Then we're going to count up the next two available stitches into the base. So all together, here's one, here's two. Into that second stitch into the base, we're going to insert with a slip stitch just to connect. That slip stitch doesn't actually count as a stitch. Then from here, we're going to slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. That slip stitch into the base still does not count as a stitch and flip our work. Then from here, we're gonna be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So making sure that we're not working into any of those slip stitches into the base, find that first stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop, yarn over, and again, gently pull through both loops on our hook. Again, into that next stitch's back loop, yarn over, pull through everything, next stitch's back loop, insert, pull through everything. Continue this until we reach the end of the row. And now that our row two is complete, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows. So getting started on our next half double crochet row, let's all chain two and flip. Now it's all gonna be done the same way, it's just gonna be within the back loops now. So yarn over, find that first stitch from our previous row and insert only into that back loop with one half double crochet. And again, yarn over into that next stitch's back loop with a half double crochet. And from here, continue with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one. Now we are back. We all should have left that last stitch that's nearest to the base. Now we're all gonna do an increase of three back loop half doubles. So yarn over into that first stitch's back loop with one half double, there we go. Into that same last back loop with a second and same last back loop with a third. And that is our increase. Now just to connect it into the base together once more, we're going to count the next two available stitches. There's one, there's two. Into that second stitch into the base, insert with a slip stitch to close off our half double crochet row. Then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base. Those two slip stitches into the base still don't count as stitches and flip our work. And from here, we're gonna be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So just start by finding that first stitch into the back loop with a slip stitch and that's it. From here, we're gonna to continue to repeat our two previous rows until we are worked into the stitch right before our middle stitch marker stitch. That row should be a half double crochet row and then I'll meet you back to do the middle row together. Alrighty, we've made our way all the way up until we've reached our stitch marker. Now we're not worked into our stitch marker, we worked into the stitch right before. Now we're all going to do our middle row, which is going to be a back loop slip stitch row for everyone with no increases and no decreases. So basically the same way that we've been doing all of our other back loop slip stitch rows. Now I reach the end of that row, we're going to chain two, flip our work, then we're gonna get started on the other side of our sleeve. So just put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three stitches right before the base, and then I'll meet you back. So we are back. We have finished up our middle row, which was our back loop slip stitch row. And then we have made our way back down towards the base with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. Now we have left the last three stitches, so we can do a decrease of three back loop half doubles together. So what we're gonna do is yarn over. We're gonna insert our hook into that third to last back loop, pull through, into that second to last back loop, pull through, and then into that last back loop, and pull through for a total of five loops on our hook. Then all we're gonna do is yarn over, pull through all five of those loops, and then we're gonna connect it into the base the same way that we've been doing. So just as a refresher, count up the next two stitches and slip stitch into that next stitch. And that's it. From here, we're gonna to continue to repeat our two previous rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, I'll meet you guys back so we can seam it all up together. All right, so we are back. The decrease side of our sleeve is complete. Now from here, we're gonna seam it up, but as you guys can see, I have already seamed mine up it's going to be the same outside loop slip stitch seam that we did for the collar, so I'm just gonna talk you guys through it. We're all gonna start by making sure that our work is flipped right side out to right side up. Insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel, then just do our outside loop slip stitch seam so we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat everything we did here. 
on the other side and then we are done. Then the last thing you're gonna have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.